I'd like to read a passage. It's from Linda Dillow's book. And she states, Hormone levels greatly influence sexual desire. A man is like a river. His testosterone levels flow constant and steady. A man has 17 sexual glands. Like Energizer bunnies, these glands work day and night, producing semen, which is stored in the inner sac of the testes. When the sac fills up, his testes tells his brain, do something quick before I explode. You see, a man's need for sex is not all in his mind. His sexual command center demands release from the accumulated buildup. In Dr. Dobton's book, what wives wish their husband knew about women, he says, when sexual response is blocked, males experience accumulating physiological pressure, which demands release. Two seminal vessels gradually fill to capacity, and when maximum levels is reached, hormonal influences sensitize the man to all sexual uh, stimuli. Now for me, that was actually new information. Uh, Steve Arterburn, in his book um, with Fred Stoker, Every Man's Battle, he says that approximately every 72 hours, this accumulated uh, semen is demanding release. And when I began to think about Simon, I thought, you know, that's just about right. About every, you know, 72 hours or so, he has the urge to merge. And I have to recognize that that is a physiological, biological need. Now, some gals will say to me, Ruth, this isn't a need like you need air to breathe, you need water to live. You're right. It is not, the word need isn't in that context. However, I would say that yes, you won't die because of lack of sex, but some marriages have died because of lack of sex. So in that context, that word need is very appropriate. And you know, when I first got married and someone told me that sex was a need for a man, I said, mm-hmm, and I need a trip to Hawaii. I didn't really realize the correlation and that it was a physiological, biological need of a man. It wasn't an option. It was something that his body was demanding. I like what Willard Harley says in his book, the first thing men cannot do without is sexual fulfillment. Do you know studies show that men think about sex as many as 20 times a day? 67% of women, we only think of it mm, a few times a week or even a month. So Hari said it was the first thing man cannot do without, and uh, that was top on most men's priority list. They asked ladies to share what was, uh, where sex uh, was on their priority list, and do you know where we put it? 14th after gardening. And one lady in one of my seminars yelled out, yes, and gardening is only seasonal. So we all had a good laugh, but do you see God made us very different in most cases? That doesn't mean that in some cases women do have a greater sex life. And if that's the way God made you, right on. It, the, the, the information that I'm sharing will obviously have to be applied in a different context. But what I'm saying is we need to recognize that sex is a need for a man. If you would have asked me what Simon's number one want was, I would have said sex. If you would have asked me what his number one need was, I may not have thought of it in that context. I remember one lady who spoke to me after a seminar and she said, Ruth, I have tried to be the best wife possible. I have three nourishing, well-cooked meals on the table every day for my husband. His shirts are ironed. My house is spotlessly clean. And my husband has the nerve to say to me, but you don't love me. She said, what do you mean I don't love you? I couldn't be a better wife. But what I was ignoring was his need for sex. I thought that was kind of a, uh, you know, after we had babies, like what's the point? And she said, I was realizing that, yeah, he was feeling unloved. While he appreciated a clean house and he appreciated the meals I was giving him, I was not addressing a physiological, biological need that he had. 